we learn about the venous anatomy of the cerebrum. The cerebral venous drainage is uh, both by a superficial set of veins called cortical veins and also a deep set of veins. The cortical veins are these veins that the ones that you see here in blue color are the cortical veins. As you see in this picture when the dura is stripped uh, with the arachnoid intact underneath that you can see uh, a set of cortical veins and I'm going to use a diagrammatic uh, representation of the cortical veins. Uh, these are the superior cerebral veins. You can see that the superior cerebral veins are draining into this venous sinus and that is the superior sagittal sinus. Right? You can see in this picture also the superior cerebral veins which are going like this these veins are draining into the superior sagittal sinus and over here if I zoom in uh, you can see that uh, this this uh, structures that you see here okay these ones uh, these are the bridging veins you can see that that veins are uh, sort of traversing from the subarachnoid space onto the superior sagittal veins and they are the bridging veins bridging veins are very important for causing subdural hemorrhage next we are going to the inferior cerebral veins inferior cerebral veins are the ones that you see here these are the inferior cerebral veins. They are draining into the transverse sinus as well as the sigmoid sinus. So they are directly draining there. And the next is a very important spotter for MBBS examinations. This is the superficial middle cerebral vein. That is the one that you are seeing here. This is the superficial middle, superficial middle cerebral vein. Uh, it is seen superficially over the sylvian fissure or the lateral sulcus. On the deeper aspect, you have the middle cerebral artery with the deep middle cerebral vein. Okay, this is the superficial middle cerebral vein that is seen on the surface aspect of the uh, sylvian fissure. Uh, you imagine that this is a coronal section uh, through the brain and this is the sylvian fissure. Uh, the upper one is the frontal. Here it will be the temporal region. And this will be the insula. Okay, this will be the insular cortex. If that is the case, then the middle cerebral artery will be lying over here. This will be the superior division and this will be the inferior division of the uh, middle cerebral artery. They will be traversing on the surface of the insula like this. Okay, along with that, you will have the deep middle cerebral vein. The deep middle cerebral vein will be accompanying the middle cerebral artery branches and the superficial middle cerebral vein will be running over here. That's why you, when you look at the subarachnoid uh, region, uh, suppose this is the arachnoid membrane that runs like this, okay, over the, uh, uh, over the frontal to the temporal region, then uh, through this part, this is the, called the sylvian system. So the superficial aspect of the sylvian system, you have the superficial middle cerebral vein. This is the superficial middle cerebral vein and this will be the deep middle cerebral vein. Deep middle cerebral vein. So uh, these are the deep contents of the uh, sylvian fissure. This is the superficial content of the sylvian fissure. The next two are very commonly asked MCQ uh, questions. Uh, these two are these veins. One of the, one of the veins is this one. This is anastomosing the superficial middle cerebral vein that you saw here with the superior sagittal sinus and another is this vein. This vein is anastomosing the again the superficial middle cerebral vein towards the transverse sinus or the uh, sigmoid sinus and this these two veins have are eponymous. Uh, it's commonly asked in a neat exam. Uh, they are a superior anastomotic vein of trollard. This is the vein of trollard and this is the vein of labe. Okay, inferior anastomotic vein of labe. So these two are basically anastomosing the super superficial middle cerebral vein to the superior sagittal sinus or to the transverse sinus. Okay, these are the cortical veins draining the outer aspect of the cerebrum. Next, we are going into the deep veins of the brain. And here again, you have a couple of eponymous names which are important. So this is an axial section which is seeing the floor of the exposing the lateral ventricle and you are seeing the floor of the lateral ventricle. All right. On that view, you can see that this is the caudate head of the caudate bulge. These two are the bulge of the head of the caudate and this is the thalamus. Okay. This structure that you see here is the thalamus. All right. In that view, uh, a little bit of phonics is also cut open here. The rest of the phonics. Phonics actually goes like this, right? The two crusts of the phonics. Those phonics are also removed. And what you are seeing here as this layer is the, this layer is the tela choroidea. All right. That is the view that you are seeing here. In this view, you can see the veins that are deep inside the brain.
brain or the core of the cerebrum is drained by these number of veins. Let us look at these veins but before we look at these veins so let us look at the final drainage point and that is this short vein. Why I said short is because the length is very small. Uh, as soon as it begins it kind of ends. Okay, That vein is the great cerebral vein of Gallen. Okay, it's very important to know that this is the great cerebral vein of Gallen because we have a couple of uh, anomalies that can occur here. Remember that the great cerebral vein of Gallen is draining the core of the brain. What you are seeing here, this region is the core of the brain. Uh, the tributaries of the great cerebral vein of Gallen are the, this vein. This vein is called the internal cerebral vein. Okay, then as you see, the internal cerebral veins are within the tila choroidea. This is the tila choroidea, that sheet, that tila choroidea contains the internal cerebral veins. Uh, now, these two veins are called the basal veins of Rosenthal. Okay, these are the Rosenthal veins or the basal veins of Rosenthal. This is called basal veins because we can better see these veins, the formation and the course of these veins when you look at the base of the brain. So, that is why it is called basal veins of Rosenthal. You are now seeing the terminal aspect of the basal veins of Rosenthal. So, basically, the great cerebral vein of Gallen is formed by the union of the internal cerebral veins and the great cerebral vein of Gallen. Okay, it begins over here and it ends over here. It is found around the uh, in the quadrigeminal cistern. Uh, below you can see these two are the superior colliculi and these are the inferior colliculi. So this is roughly the region of the uh, quadrigeminal cistern and you are seeing that this is underneath the uh, splenium of the corpus callosum. So it is underneath it and that is how it is traversing the uh, uh, quadrigeminal system. That is a great cerebral vein of Callan. Now let us have a look at how the internal cerebral vein is formed. Internal cerebral vein is in turn uh, formed by thalamostriate vein. Thalamostriate vein is lodging in the groove between the caudate nucleus over here and the thalamus over here. So between the caudate and the thalamus you have the thalamostriate vein. So the thalamostriate vein and the choroidal vein. This is the choroidal vein. Choroidal vein accompanies the choroid plexus. Okay, what you are seeing is obviously the choroid plexus and the choroid plexus is accompanied by the choroidal vein. The choroidal vein and the thalamostriate vein are together joining and soon these veins also uh, drain into it. These are called the septal veins. The septal vein as you know that this is the septum pellucidum, a double layered membrane that lies between the corpus callosum here and the phonics here. That is a septum pellucidum which we have seen many times in the sagittal sections of the brain. So these veins that accompany that uh, drain the septum are called the septal veins. The septal veins also drain in and together these three veins so you can remember these three as TCS okay TCS uh, that is thalamostriate choroidal and the uh, septal veins together uh, they drain into the internal cerebral vein the internal cerebral vein runs in the tila choroidea and the internal cerebral vein joins with the basal vein of Rosenthal to drain into the great cerebral vein of Gallen. Now let us have a look at this basal vein of Rosenthal as I said before it is called basal vein. So let us have a look at the basal aspect of the brain to have a better idea of the basal vein of Rosenthal. This is the basal vein of Rosenthal. Okay, it is running, it is flanking uh, both sides of the midbrain and you know that sides of the midbrain, this is the ambient cistern. So it is coursing through the ambient cistern, the uh, basal vein of Rosenthal, along with the posterior cerebral artery. Here in that picture, posterior cerebral artery is cut over here, but you know that the posterior cerebral artery will run like this. So it is accompanying the posterior cerebral artery and it is joining with the internal cerebral vein which you saw on the in the... Uh, earlier picture and it joins with that to uh, drain into the great cerebral vein of Gallen. You are now having a, uh, an inferior view and in an inferior view you can see that this structure is a splenium of the corpus callosum. So the great cerebral vein of Gallen is basically just underneath the splenium of the corpus callosum. The two main tributaries that you see are the deep middle cerebral vein. This is the deep middle cerebral vein. As I said before this is the sylvian fissure sylvian fissure on the superficial aspect of the sylvian fissure you see this vein this vein was dealt before this is the superficial middle cerebral vein okay but this is the deep deep middle cerebral vein and deep middle cerebral vein is accompanying the middle cerebral artery you we have earlier learned in detail okay we have clearly examined the middle cerebral artery you know that this is the stem of the middle cerebral artery and this is the insular segment of the middle cerebral artery the deep middle cerebral vein is joining with this vein this is the anterior cerebral vein you can see the anterior cerebral vein is accompanying the anterior cerebral artery 
So these two veins, the deep middle cerebral vein and the anterior cerebral vein is together forming the basal vein of Rosenthal. Now let us have a look at this picture. This is the dural venous sinus and as you can see here, this is the great cerebral vein of Galen. VOG vein of Galen is the uh, this short vein and see how the great cerebral vein of Galen is terminating. It is terminating at this point where the inferior sagittal sinus continues as the straight sinus. Okay, so the inferior sagittal sinus along with the vein of Galen forms the straight sinus. Straight sinus is lying at the uh, midline. Okay, it is at the midline and the vein, vein of Galen is a single midline uh, vein. All right. Now let us have a look at this picture also. This is showing the vein of Galen. This is again the vein of Galen. This is a superior view of the base of the skull. And what you are seeing here as a section is inferior sagittal sinus. And this is obviously the straight sinus. All right. And you know that the straight sinus continues as the usually as the left transverse sinus. And the superior sagittal sinus continues as the right transverse sinus. And you know that the transverse sinus will continue as the sigmoid sinus and the sigmoid sinus will eventually drain into this is the transverse sinus, this is the sigmoid sinus and the sigmoid sinus will eventually drain into the IJV. So the entire brain is eventually through the superficial venous system, so through the superficial venous system or the cortical venous system as well as the deep venous system which we learned just now, it finally drains into the internal jugular vein. Right, what I've drawn here is a like semi schematic of a superior view of the dural venous sinuses drainage. Okay. Uh, in the superior view, you imagine that this is the straight sinus, and the straight sinus is going towards the left transfer sinus. This is the left side, and this is the right side. So the straight sinus drains towards the left transfer sinus, which goes to the left sigmoid sinus and finally drains into the left IJV. This is the section of the superior sagittal sinus. So in this view, you know that superior sagittal sinus runs like this, right? And it goes like this and goes to the right transverse sinus. This is the torcula herophily or the confluence of sinuses. At that place, the superior sagittal sinus usually goes towards the right side and to the right sigmoid sinus and to the right IJV. This is the right IJV. All right, so in that case, you know that the straight sinus is now getting its blood from the vein of gallon okay this is the vein of gallon and you know vein of gallon gets its drainage from the internal cerebral veins as well as the basal vein of Rosenthal so that means that is draining from the core of the brain so in my brain it will be like this from the core of the brain through the internal cerebral veins and the basal vein of Rosenthal the vein of gallon is going to drain the blood through the straight sinus, it will go towards the left transverse sinus. The superior cerebral veins goes towards the superior sagittal sinus, which goes towards the right transverse sinus and thus to the right IJV. So there is a preference, relative preference of the core of the brain to drain towards the left IJV and the surface of the brain drain towards the right IJV. This is a general preference, especially the superior aspects of the cortical region can uh, go to the right transfer sinus. The blood from that region can go to the right transfer sinus from the core of the brain through the straight sinus it goes towards the left transfer sinus and to the left IJV. Alright, that is about the venous drainage of the brain. Thank you.